2023 Secret Invasion review, MCU miniseries, and I suppose it's not impossible that this is just season one and there will be more, but I don't think so. If there is more later down the line, I'll do another video talking about that. Now, this was a show that I loved a lot of the time. Uh, there will be some jokes in this video, and will again, I will get into some serious topics. So this, uh, yeah, I realize this video is long. I'm doing what I can to make it worth your time. This video is a review where, if I spoil anything, I'll verbally warn before I do so. Hold up an index finger until I'm done with the spoilers. You can mute and skip it and you see me lower my index finger. Please note, I will not warn before spoilers for earlier entries in the MCU. And if you want my spoilful thoughts on episodes, the link to them will be in the description box. And yeah, so I have watched every single episode once each, and I got done with the finale just like 20 minutes ago, then did the thoughts videos, and here I am making the review. So it's very fresh in my mind. So, the plot. Uh, we're, yeah, it's present day. Fury and Talos try to stop the, stop the Skrulls who have infiltrated the highest spheres of the Marvel Universe. And, yeah, so, you, you need some background knowledge in order to be able to follow this. I suppose the stuff you absolutely need to have seen in order to be able to follow this is the 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 Captain Marvel solo movie and I suppose that is the the most important yeah if if you if you've watched that and you have like some knowledge of what the I suppose, yeah, the, there are a couple of things that you do need to know what are, like, they mentioned the blip, that's a, there's some, you know, it, as every MCU project that's come out since the blip, pretty much, I realize there's like, I think Moon Knight doesn't really, but, but other than that, all of them, yeah, uh, let's see, yeah, so let's start with the writing. So, yeah, this had an entire writer's room, including uh, Kyle Bradstreet was the show creator. He wrote two episodes. I, I'm not particularly familiar with the... Yeah, the, the people from the, the writer's room... Now, let's see, yeah, so a uh, quick uh, Wikipedia quote. Feige said the series would not be looking to match the scope of the Secret Invasion comic book storyline in terms of the number of characters featured or the impact on the wider universe. Noted that the comic book featured more characters than the crossover Endgame, uh, yeah, than the movie Endgame, Avengers Endgame. Instead, he described Secret Invasion as a showcase for Jackson Mendelssohn that would explore the political paranoia elements of the Secret Invasion comic series that was great with the twists and turns that that took. Jackson said the series would uncover some of the things that happened during the blip. And it definitely is, like, there are some great bits of writing when it comes to, like, spy, you know, yeah, it's essentially the show is a spy thriller with, you know, shape-shifting aliens set in the MCU. That's and, and I do appreciate that. I, I really appreciate that this is not trying to match the massive action scenes of some of the other MCU shows and, and the movies and such. The, the show does a pretty good job with, like, intrigue. There's a lot of trying to guess who's a Skrull, who's working for who, because, you know, being a Skrull doesn't mean you're evil, unlike in the comics. You know, yeah, and and people are constantly trying to outsmart each other, and you know, there's it. 
it's very clear that it's difficult for anyone to trust anyone else. And there are some concepts like I've the the um actually before I get further into that I want to talk so yeah the the pilot is is quite good um sets up the major characters and gives idea of the 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 core conflicts of the show the finale is not great um I, I can't get into too much detail without spoiling. I will just say that it definitely... It makes some, some crucial mistakes. Now, uh, I have not read the, the comic. I've, I've just seen... I, I watched... Linkara did like a review of the comic book. So that you know, gave me a little bit of an idea of, and and there's definitely they made a lot of changes, significant changes, you know, which I appreciate. The the MCU continues to be good at taking elements from stories, and and plastering the title there to get the fans, you know, but not trying to just, you know, beat for beat do the same story, which, like that's led to some of the worst of the of the comic book movies, or when they try to just take what works really well on a comic book page and and make it yeah now uh, yeah so so direction um apparently all six episodes were directed by Ali Salem I am not familiar with his other work but he has been working let's see he's been he directed a short in 96 and he directed like longer and bigger stuff since 2005 so he has a decent amount of experience and like some of the other stuff is also this kind of thriller yeah and yeah so the the show has the most brutal action that we've seen so far in the official MCU it's not quite as intense as Marvel Netflix Bones are breaking, people are being stabbed and bleed, there's torture. And similar to the Falcon and the Winter Soldier, this one takes an unflinching look at how black people have been treated in America during segregation. The show talks about bigotry, what it leads to, you know, Skrulls have experienced it, so it's Nick Fury. And, let's see... Yeah, you know, in especially what he experienced... Yo, know, yeah, in his youth when African Americans didn't have civil rights. Unfortunately, the show doesn't really do anything with these. It just verbally explores them and moves on. And you know, the the fact that the the core concept does kind of suggest that refugees are dangerous. You, you shouldn't let them into your country, which is just completely it is an incredibly toxic idea. It's it's not the kind of thing that you should at all be it should be impossible to interpret that from anything that but you know they don't they're not great at, at this they this doesn't fare as well like I, I do think that the fact on the winter soldier while still having some issues for sure did handle this better you know you leave that show you know if unless you're like a conservative unless you are completely incapable of media analysis. If you watch The Fact of the Winter Soldier, you understand, okay, there's there's racism in America, you, you know, you are treated as a second-class citizen for no good reason in, in that kind of, you know. But this show, you know, for, for black people, yes. But I could see how there might be people watching this who think that refugees are inherently untrustworthy, which just incredibly disgusting idea. Let's see uh, now. As I uh, hoped, the it this show does take inspiration from the 1982 version of The Thing. That level of paranoia, obviously not that level of body horror. And uh, let's see. Yes, you know, going into this, I really hope they wouldn't reveal any longtime established MCU character to have been a scroll for a really long time. 
see, but you know there are. You know, it does take a note from the Terminator movies. There are some squirrels going around killing people. And let's see. And it does, like, I won't give away who, but there are definitely some revealed in this that, you know, yeah, it's it's clear that they are currently being, you know, impersonated by a squirrel. I wish that it did more to make clear when... That started, but I, you know, maybe in the future we'll we'll get an answer to that. Let's see. And yeah, in the MCU, a lot of the time they don't allow the characters the depth of emotion that the major cast of the show are capable of. Samuel Jackson has thought of more of that really cool guy, even though since it's PG-13, he can't drop the MF bomb. So I'm really glad that here, they're allowed to go deep. A chunk of the show is just incredibly talented actors delivering great, impactful dialogue. Yeah, I really appreciate that they don't feel the need to constantly throw action at us. And there's also, there are still MCU-style jokes, but it doesn't, it's not as aggressive as some of the other recent stuff. You know, this is nothing like Thor, Love, and Thunder, for example. And, but, but yeah, you know, I'll, you know, I'm, I, yeah, so I mentioned Samuel Jackson, Ben Mendelsohn, like, he felt kind of wasted in the Sol Captain Marvel solo movie, you know, it was basically stunt casting, it's like, you know, we got the scrolls, we got the guy who always plays villains, you know, everyone is going to believe, and we did. We all fell for it. We all believed that the Skrulls were really the bad guys. Talos was the main Skrull, so he must be the main villain of this of the movie. You know, yeah, some people had definitely guessed that the Kree would also be, you know, but I don't think anybody had guessed that they would straight up say, no, these guys, they're, they're refugees, they deserve empathy, you know. In this show, he actually gets to, to show off, like... Dude's incredibly talented, you know, hopefully you already knew that, but if not, this is definitely going to make that clear. Uh, Emilia Clark does well, uh, and I appreciate, you know, in this, like, in some of the other stuff she's, you know, some of the stuff she's very known for, there's, she also does, like, charm, and, and you know, in this, she's not, not to say that she's, like, uninteresting, Although, she's not as interesting as she could be, but in this, she's not... They, they don't try to... They don't rely on her natural charm. Don Cheadle does really, really well, at, you know, playing Rhodey. Um, I think... I think this might be his best performance in the MCU so far. And that's another, like, if you, if you only know Don Cheadle from the MCU, you might not be aware... He's an unbelievably talented actor. You know, the, the MCU are casting so many talented actors and then giving them nothing to do for a lot of it. So I really appreciate it. Kingsley Benadir, uh, you know, plays a, a scroll. I, yeah, not a scroll. He, he plays Gravik, the, the leader of a faction of scrolls. And, like, I gotta see him in more stuff. I, I believe this is the first thing I see him in, but just, yeah, like, he is unbelievably talented you know like if, if you have someone playing a leader it's good if they can be really charismatic and like give one hell of a speech and yeah absolutely like the you know you can understand why he wins people over and Killian Scott plays Pagon who is very... Ah, I don't really want to give too much away. I'll just say he's he's pretty high up in among the, the scrolls. Samuel Adewumni plays Beto, a scroll who recently found Gravik's group, and through him we sort of see, you know... It's it's very, very straightforward. It's, it's practically screenwriting 101 to say, okay, this guy's new, so... It's, other characters will explain things to him that we can then explain to the audience, you know, without having people who know, you know, yeah, characters who already know everything that they're about to tell each other, t 
telling each other stuff that the audience needs to know. And we also see kind of you know we yeah we really understand why people follow Gravik, and also sort of. I'm just gonna double check that that's not a lightning. And it is not. So the yeah through Beto you see both how Gravik can be incredibly convincing, it also kind of, you know, you, you understand why not everyone is as convinced by Gravik as many are. Kobe Smulders returns as Maria Hill, and still great. Olivia Coleman plays Sonia Falsworth, and she's basically... I, what is it called again? MI5, MI6, one of those. The the British, you know, intelligence or agency. And she, like, she's so chipper whilst saying and doing just the worst thing. Like, you know, spy stuff, torture. And, yeah, I, it's, it's you know, she's she's fantastic. Um, I've, I've always liked Olivia Coleman. You know, yeah, I'm, I'm really glad that they, they put her in this. Charlene Woodard plays an important character. I don't think I really want to give away, but but yeah, you know, great to see her again. You know, like I was really happy when I, you know, yeah, when I saw her in Glass. Yeah, other than that, it's 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 been a minute, and she's, yeah, she's still incredibly talented. She's been in, you know, yeah, she's been acting for over 20, 20 years, so just, yeah. Um, I think that is what I'm going to say. Now, uh, like any spy story worth telling this long after we meet the central character, this does reveal things about the past that informs the characters and puts things that we've already seen in a different context. The show does sometimes reveal that it was filmed partially during COVID. There are scenes you would think had at least half a dozen people appear will only have two or three because of the rules. This is, of course, frustrating, but it is definitely better than risking the pandemic worsening. And let's see. Yeah, and there there are a lot of scenes that have this paranoid, uncertain feeling. You know, you... You don't know who's a scroll. You don't know exactly who, you know, yeah, who is, who's on whose side kind of thing. Now, let's see. I don't have a lot more to say about characters, but I will briefly say, you know, Quoting Wikipedia here, Jackson said the series will delve deeper into Fury's past and future and allowed him to explore something other than the badassery of who Nick Fury is, which, yeah, very true, and I really appreciate it. It's, it's, yeah, great to see him get to act in, in this, yeah. And I think that might be... Yeah, and the yeah the dialogue has this great like hard boiled kind of it feels very mature and adult, you know. Let's see. So the cinematography, uh, I will briefly say. So it was handled by Remy Adefarasin for all six episodes apparently, and. It's, I guess, the, hmm. it's not the best I've ever seen. I don't want to, like, put down, because basically, like, I've, this guy was probably told he had to adhere to the MCU house style. It's very clear, like, he, he knows what he's doing. And there are a couple of shots that are very, very impressive, very daring. But yeah, it doesn't really... At least not as often as we'd like to see go completely outside of... 
Now, the editing, uh, let's see. Yeah, so there are three credited editors, Melissa Lawson Chung, Pete Bodro, and James Stanger. And there's definitely, there's some really, really great editing in this. There's this very tense confrontation. I won't tell you who takes part in it, but it's hand, I suppose this part of the credit here goes to, to the cinematography. It's filmed in this very, very, like, very tight close-up. You can almost only see the two people that are involved in it. And it's a it's a nice long take like I think it's maybe two minutes and there's no there's if, if I recall there's no cutting in in that time it's just close up on two incredibly talented actors just acting you know just delivering this dialogue that really you know it it you can tell like that's something I didn't mention about the the dialogue like basically pretty much every line in this show like you can take and like just copy paste the text and there's a pretty good chance that someone who is familiar with these characters if they don't remember who said the line they can pinpoint who said the line and who they're talking to you know how far along in their arc they are you know and and that's that's great um, there's some great cross-cutting to that that really helps build tension and yeah so the special effects they a lot of the time they they avoid showing scrolls like changing their appearance on camera like it'll maybe be blurred in the background or someone will change when the camera is off them or something you know yeah, the, the special effects vary. Some of them are really good. You know, CG people really need a good union. The, the show has drawn some criticism for the intro sequence being AI generated. And yeah, I absolutely agree. They shouldn't have done that, especially like it's... And they got criticism after, you know, they when the first episode hit, they got criticism for it. For the rest of the, you know, there's six episodes total. All six episodes have that intro. Uh, you know, I, I get that they wanted to, like, include the, the uh, you know, a lot of text credits. Uh, you know, the, the entire sequence is maybe two minutes or something. Uh, you know, I just, I wish that they had just, like, I get it, I get it wouldn't be as compelling, but, you know, white text on a black background, if if you aren't gonna pay the the special effects people to, to do, anyway. And to be clear, it's, you know, it was, there were, there was at least one special effect, like, a, a CG person involved, and the decision was made, like, it, it wasn't just, but it's still just, yeah. And, and I, I understand the appeal for them, because the, the, you know, the way that CG, uh, AI art is right now, it looks inhuman, like, it, it, the AI can't quite figure out faces and hands yet, you know, which, yeah. There's a lot of examples of that online. That was obviously part of the appeal. They're they're like it's this alien thing trying to mimic human beings and not quite getting it right. And there's something inherently creepy there. I I still think it was the the wrong choice. There's some excellent stunt work. And let's see. Yeah, some of this was filmed on location. In London, let's see, at uh, Atlanta and Los Angeles, and they get great stuff out of the, the like. You have some very lived-in places, you know. It it feels like like you get the sense of of many many years of history, and it very much is a show that is about history. Like the, the they they make references to stuff that's like 
quite old. Now, the music is handled by... Uh, hold on. That's not right. Ah, uh, there we go. Chris Bowers. And I am not... I'm not sure I'm particularly familiar with... Okay, 50 completed and three upcoming... Um... Okay, yeah, some of it is like shorts and, and such. It's not all like feature length. Um, yeah, not yeah, not familiar with with any of it. But it, yeah, um, Chris, he has done other recent like TV. Um, let's see, Queen Charlotte, a Bridgerton story. We own this city. DMZ, Inventing Anna, you know, and yeah, it's, it's really, really good, the, the, the music is incredibly important in building tension, and it does incredibly well. Now, the antagonist is deeply memorable. And there's some great sound design, which is, of course, important when you're dealing with aliens with abilities and technology that does not exist in real life. And pacing-wise, this definitely does, like, there's usually some kind of danger. It's just not, like, it's not the constant action scenes, but there is this underlying sense of tension throughout where from like it starts with us being told you know there there are dangerous scrolls out there and for the rest of the show we're constantly like at, at it feels like at any moment someone could turn out to be a scroll and or have ill intent and and do something really horrible now the episodes are around uh, hold on. there we go yeah the, the episodes vary in length some are almost an hour some are close to 30 minutes and that brings us to and yeah right now it does not seem like there will be more than the one season. And yeah, um, the best elements are the, the paranoia depicted and inspired in the audience. The, the way that it actually does, like I wish it went further, but it does at least bring up and give examples of how bad things were for black people before they got their civil rights and also some, you know, since there's still a lot of problems. The, the worst aspect is probably how the, the finale handles a very important issue. Yeah. And, um, yeah, I, I, I do think that's a, it's a, it's a problem. I, I, um, I would probably not recommend, like, if you're... I saw, I, I believe it was a comment on Jesse Gender's video on the finale. Someone said they, they had skipped this entire show because of what they'd heard, because they were the, the child of, of immigrants. And, yeah, honestly, you know, on, on one, like, both because, I yes, I 100% I support anyone who chooses to boycott the show. Either, you know, if you are an, an immigrant or related to immigrants, or just out of, like, um, uh, solidarity. On the one hand, because of, like, honestly, I wouldn't rule out, it might be triggering for some people. And I use that completely unironically. And... I think it would be, like, I think it's right to, to boycott something like this to send the message to Disney that they, to quote um, Sam, 
do better. And let's see. Right. Uh, yeah, the thing before watching the show, I was probably most worried that the pacing would be bad, but that didn't really turn out to be the case. Something I was really looking forward to was more Fury and Talos together, and they are really, really excellent together. And I think that pretty well comes. Right, so the, the trailers do give at least a little too much away. The, the cover... Uh, hold on. What is the cover? I'll just uh, real quick check to see. Ah, 49. I'm going to have to skim. Um, no, no. The, the posters don't give too much away. Now, the... Let's see. That brings us to Rotten Tomatoes. And just going to get the most updated. Okay, so it has 60% based on 173 reviews, 106 fresh, 67 rotten. The average rating is 6.35 out of 10. The audience score is 67 based on over 1,000 ratings. The average rating is 3.5 out of 5. And... That brings us to Metacritic, where it has a 63 out of 100, based on 24 critic reviews, 12 positive, 11 mixed, only one negative, and, uh, right, for some reason, there we go. Um, the User score is 3.5 out of 10, based on 44 ratings, 26 negative, 8 mixed, and 10 positive. And... Yeah, the... It's... I guess the... Yeah, just skimming. It's not really. Yeah, the the. It's just people whining. the The negative reviews. I wish they were. I th I thought there might. Yeah, for a second there, I forgot. Metacritic is not great for. It's mostly just conservatives whining that they think it's too left wing with. I and many other left wing do not feel it's anywhere near left wing enough, but yeah, that's pretty. Yeah, sadly, it's it's a. Uh, um, and the mid are also not really. The mixed reviews, I mean, are also. Yeah, yeah, not a lot of. And yeah, the um, I guess at this point I might as well briefly skim the positive. Wow. Okay, this is also interesting. One of the positive ones says, seemingly without the political agenda of current year Hollywood, which I mean, it's at least positive, but that's not. Anyway, um, yeah, honestly, the positive ones don't really. They, they, it's for some of them, it kind of feels like it's just they're they're trying to counter all the all the negative. And on IMDb, it has a six point seven out of ten, based on twenty three thousand votes. Eighteen point eight percent gave it seven. Seventeen point nine percent gave it ten. 17.3 gave it 8, 12.0 gave it 6, 8.6 gave it 9, 7.9 gave it 1, which is, I can understand if a lot of those are immigrants or 
or do doing it in like solidarity, but otherwise it's pretty ridiculous. 7.5% gave it 5, 4.3 gave it 4, 2.9 gave it 3, 2.8 gave it 2. And that... Right, I, I mentioned that there's more violence. I don't think I mentioned. I think it's appropriate. I think it makes sense. It makes the world feel grittier and darker. And... Yeah. Um... I, I rate this a 7 out of 10. And I think... Yeah, I'm, I'm just gonna... Yeah, so... Um, ranked worst to best, and keeping in mind... This is probably the... Yeah, I don't love everything about this. I don't love everything about any of them, but a lot of them I do love almost everything about. Uh, so, so yeah, I'm you know I'm not. This ranking is not about whether or not I love these. It's you know, yeah, something has to be at the bottom. You get it. Yeah, the overall show worst to best. Loki season one, what if season one, Secret Invasion, Hawkeye, The Falcon and the Winter Soldier, Moon Knight, Ms. Marvel, and WandaVision. The finale, worst to best, Secret Invasion, Hawkeye, The Falcon and the Winter Soldier, Moon Knight, Ms. Marvel, and WandaVision. And the pilot, worst to best, what if Loki, Hawkeye, Secret Invasion, The Falcon and the Winter Soldier, Moon Knight, Ms. Marvel, and WandaVision. And yeah, um, the yeah if you like this video please thumbs up subscribe hit that little bell there should be a link to my main channel page one two more links to stuff like relevant playlists they suggest a video for you to watch on the screen right about now i put out one vlog per week reviewing and sharing spoiler thoughts on a movie recent review and thoughts videos tend to come out very similar to this one but with the thoughts in the same video instead of in a separate in separate videos since the running time of a movie is significantly shorter than a show so yeah um Please support the SAC after F. Crap, I keep screwing up the SAG AFTRA strike. And uh, yeah, I you know I put some links to, to excellent YouTube videos in the description box that really yeah explore the the strike. Uh, the you know I'm just I'm very very briefly going to. So there's, there's one, one of the Metacritic user reviews, one person said, if this is what the writers are striking about getting credit for, they are in for a rude awakening. If the studio people were unhappy with the writing, they would demand changes, maybe fire them, the strike is not about whether or not you think they're good writers. It's about getting paid for doing work. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, before I get off on a huge tangent, I am gonna end it here. But yeah, um, Yeah, uh, don't scab, support the strike, people should get paid if they do work. What a novel concept. Make my marvel.